Welcome to the Late Night Gamer and my top 5 war games I like to play solo. Not all of these games have solitaire modules. Um, not all are recommended for the best solitaire experience even. My emphasis here is really on my own gaming experience when I play alone. I'm not bound to having an AI I can play both sides, so that's in the mix as well. So the focus is really on that. How much do I, which games do I enjoy the most playing solitaire? Yeah, I specifically also said war games in my title or, uh, here, so then we need to talk maybe a little bit of what is a war game. For this list, at least, uh, if the main event in the game is about combat resolution, and that is an uh, integrated part of the game that sort of drives the game, that is a war game. F for me, that would leave out games like, well, any coin games, and games like um, Twilight Struggle here, Labyrinth, or even Gears of War here will be put off that list. I don't really have Fantasy Star Fighter, so that's why, why Gears of War is off the list. And Zombicide as well. Um, I prefer historical based war games, so when I play war games alone, I play, well I shouldn't say exclusively, um, historic based war games, but that at least that gives me the best gaming experience. Okay, so that's the restrictions of the list. And let's start, and none of these are on it, so let's magically take them away. So number five is a dice game. Well, it's not really a dice game. It is a miniature game, and it is bolt action. So, um, you may or may not uh, be familiar with bolt action, but, but as I said, it's a miniature game. So you need to have all these small dudes. I have, you know, on the map, running around. So Bolt Action is a miniatures game, where you have this squad of infantry, or tanks even, or all kinds of units really, that you have to assemble and paint. They don't come like this, they come like on a sprue and you have to put them together, glue. See this guy is half done. And um, and that takes a lot of time, but anyway, this this uh, this game is um, is a miniature game, as I said, where the squad, where the where the units are these figures, individual figures in a squad. There's a lot of dice chucking because you have your every rifle basically in a squad um, fires a gun, which is a number of dice. So you roll dice and you roll to hit and then you take all casualties. It's quite simple, although the rule book seems a bit thick, but it's you know beautifully illustrated and a lot of special rules and units in here which you don't really need to play to get to start playing. Even though there's a lot of dice rolling, it does not really feel random. It's not the drive it's not the dice that drives the game, like in for instance the hunters, but it's you use the dice to resolve combat and the outcome of combat while you move your man, you know, around the map, um, around hindrances, using cover and this kind of stuff. So it's quite strategic. It's a little bit, little bit tongue in cheek, sort of Hollywood style, but I like that. I think that's fine. And these dice here are special dice. Each of your units gets a die and you put them in a bag, and you randomly pull from the bag. The next turn is the red side, wherever that is, maybe Russians or Brits or whatever you like. You decide, and there's a gray set in here as well. So when the chip, or not the chip, but the dice come out, that unit can activate. So that's really, that's really a standard chip pull system. It plays really fast with a low complexity. It's very easy to play both sides here uh, for solitaire play. And you can make up your own scenarios quite easily. Do you want to find out, you know, for instance, Battle of the Bulge? You can buy all these kind of campaign books. You know, you can make up your own scenarios in here. What happens if a 
two troops of Germans are storming a building with allied troops in it and they have some machine gun support or even we can even have tank support can they hold out? well play the game and find out um, so it's kind of modular you can buy these, these books here and it will give you inspiration to play different uh, campaigns or scenarios there's some in here there's uh, some history also in these books um, building army lists it's a whole hobby in itself which is really a little bit of the negative sides here as well because the full game experience requires a lot of investments both in armies I mean you need like quite a few men I can't really see this but you need like maybe 50 men on each side and so and when they come unassembled on the sprue you need to paint them and assemble them or in the opposite order of course paint them uh, sorry assemble them with glue and then paint them and it plays on quite a big footprint I know a 4x4 table is recommended even a 4x6 table so um, yeah um, Takes, takes a lot of time, which is also the reason I don't really play it that much because most of my stuff is really unassembled and yet I'm working on it, but I have so much other things to do as well, so I haven't gotten that far um, that's, that's really um, the reason it's not higher on my list than on 5th, or well, 5th is good I guess but still, um, I also play this mostly 2 player, I must admit but playing it um, a solitaire, a solo is, is absolutely doable and, and, and quite quite a lot of fun. For that instant, maybe not so instant, but if you have everything set up, for that sort of like an instant World War Two uh, World War Two experience, you can dive right in and, and play some bolt action and that should be fantastic. And it's fantastic fun. It's so fast, all the things that you see in Hollywood movies can happen and will happen in this game here. Right. That's number five on my list. That's bolt action from Warlord Games. Right, so I magically made uh, bolt action go away. That moves us to number four, which is an old out of print game from uh, Victory Games. Ambush. Solitaire squad level World War II combat in France 1940. Now I'm sure you heard of this game, but maybe you haven't played it because as I said it is out of print and can be quite expensive to acquire. I'm starting to sleeving these cards here, but we finished, ran out of sleeves. Oh, anyway, let's take these away and show you the content of this game. This game is really famous, kind of like a cult status nowadays, I think. These are all the units in the game, by the way, it's not many. There's a lot of booklets in here. Rules. Some cheat sheets. And the maps. And these paragraph sheets where you will, you know, use them to read certain segments out of the campaign book. So it's a scripted thing here. Um, in this game your units are are men, again much like bolt action. So you have soldiers like this and you will name them, at least you're encouraged to, oops, and then you will deploy them according to a scenario on a map. And then you will move about and when you enter hex you will you enter hex you will look it up and you will read from one of these books here what's going on so I'm not going to show you that because that's sort of like a spoiler so after you build your squad and you played out your missions you know something happens these missions are scripted of course and hexes here are mapped to the events. When you move into hex, you will figure out what's going on in that hex and you, you may get attacked or you may 
discover something. So this game is 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 probably the game that gives me most of that really fear of the unknown type of thing. <clears throat> so you're in one hex and you have no idea what's in the next. If the building up front is empty or not, you don't know. You will go through the booklet and you'll find out. Um, and you really get attached to the guys in your troop, so you want to take care of them. But that's tough, I mean, when there are a bunch of angry, angry Germans about. So, so I guess uh, the positive sides here is that it is extremely, um, extremely thematic. And I think it describes, or imagine at least, it describes very well that fear of the unknown. What is happening if I move up to that building? Is it empty? Should I send two men? Should I send the whole squad? What if they get wiped out and they're not available for the next mission and, you know, Private Jones is gone? That's a terrible blow. Has a low complexity, low density of counters, and it plays quite smoothly and fast once you get into it. On the negative side, of course, it's the out of print thing. It's hard to get by, can be expensive, and because it's scripted, it has quite a limited replayability value. And that's maybe a reason why I haven't played it as much as I would like, is because I feel like it's a treasure, right? It's something precious to, to have and to keep, because once I played it, I spoil it, and I can just as well sell it. And I don't want to sell it, I want to have it on my shelf. I also have this notion that if I make a choice here, I go left instead of right, will that hinder me and unravel the experiences that could be on the right so I don't get the full game experience. Kind of a little bit, kind of, it's a little bit stupid, but that's how I feel anyway. It's kind of similar to the feeling I get from Arkham Horror, the card game, and I want to explore every option, so I really have a hard time pushing myself to progress through the missions. There's so much game in here which I haven't enjoyed yet because I took this choice. So, yeah, and that's, most probably uh, what I have on the negative side because um, it gives truly a very nice game experience and it's uh, purely a solitaire game of course. That's Ambush from Victory Games. Let's move on to, uh, to number three. Number three is something entirely different. Not only is it not a purely solitary game, but the scale is dramatically different from both Bolt Action and from Ambush, and it's a huge game. It's a monster game. It's Unconditional Surrender, World War II in Europe. Fantastic game from, from GMT Games um, and Salvatore Vasta. And I even, I even got nuts and got the mounted maps for it, because I just love mounted maps. So if I can zoom in maybe a little bit, yeah, you can see the graphics here is fantastic. Uh, it's, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful map and really inspires gameplay. So the scale here, as I said, is dramatically different. Each unit is an army, actually. Let's see if I can find an example. Yeah. So each of these, uh, these Russian guards, I believe, are, are armies. Um, it's a bit unique because there's no combat factor on the chits. That's designed, that's, that's designed to work differently um, on the chart. And I, I made a playthrough of this game on my channel, so you can go and check it out. There should be maybe an eye, something up here. Um, telling you about that if you're interested where I play one of the smaller scenarios because thankfully you don't have to play the double map uh, entire Europe thing because when you know unfold these this is just one half of it right it's huge 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 you have the entire Europe here from from Britain or actually from parts of the US until far into Russia so it's quite a lot of stuff in here, but it's not terribly difficult. This is of course a two-player game designed as a purely a two-player or maybe a two and three-player game, recommended with two players, but you can very, very easily play both sides. And what I wanted to show you oops, in here is that there are a book, a 
playbook which comes with scenarios and there are a number of one map scenarios but as I said there are a number of, of scenarios where you, can, where you only use one map here's one from the east and that's USSR 41 to 44 which is Barbarossa basically so thankfully you don't have to fold out both the maps every time um, I really like that there are individual nationalities here and there's a politic element where you play your politic counters and you can actually draw these neutral nations into your own side in the conflict and it doesn't have to be historical here's even Irish and there's Greek and Norwegians and Finnish and Swedes and Yugoslavs, Romania and they have different characteristics the different troops from the different nationalities There's no hidden information, which lends very well to solitaire play. Other than that little bit tricky, should I commit support here or not? Uh, which is in a step in the battle. Should I fly airplanes to support my attack? And if I say yes, myself as the opposition opposing player will know if I said yes or not. So that is that's a little bit gamey or you can you of course resolve that by chucking dice or whatever. Um, low, actually, even though the the scale here is huge, it's it's a low complexity. It covers the entire war, but since every unit is an army, it keeps that number down really dramatically. It's very easy combat resolution. There's no calculating of odds. You just roll on a table. If you have tanks fighting infantry. You have already some kind of factors or column shifts on the table. You roll, and instead of getting a six, you know that because it was an army, it would be a seven. It was a, a, a German army, it would be a seven, and so forth. And then you roll for defense, and you find out what happens. It's very, very easy and fast combat resolution. So on the negative sides here, well, of course, also I want to say that. Um, you don't really stack. You can't have more than one army in one hex, which also helps with the complexity. You can have some air forces and some markers and stuff, but not more than one army. That's great. It keeps the complexity again down to uh, manage manageable numbers. Uh, if there's something negative to say, it's really that committing sorties, maybe spoiling your plans, and it do take a bit of table space. can see here if you unfold you have both maps put together that is going to take your entire table so yeah that's probably it for negatives go check it out unconditional surrender if you're at all interested and wanted to see if you want if you could play a monster game it's not really a monster game it is a huge game so indulge and and have some fun with this fantastic game i cannot recommend unconditional surrender highly enough all right still as good as it is it's not my number one it could very well be the best game in here i'm not saying that it's just not right now on top of my list of gaming experience but it is number three and that is pretty darn good so let's move on and check out what is on my second spot okay so i have a confession to make my number two and my number one i can't really pick between them and both are so fantastically good well my number two is this game here or, or this series of games the advanced squad leader starter kits now i have made a couple of playthroughs with uh, with uh, aslsk and I moved from infantry up to, well, this is actually box number three. I don't have box number two. I have the content, but not the box. And the box number two is what I've played, which covers guns. And number three is what's next, I guess, with tanks. And so the units, you see the boxes are small and they are not expensive. It's of course by Multiman Publishing. And the units, keeping this shoebox 
here's the rest of the stuff. Here is maps and scenarios and stuff. And here are units and charts, I guess. Added material, printed material, but units. So from all, but remember, I have all the, the three starter kits, and I also have the expansions, the small Beyond the Beaches expansion, and I also also I have this one which is the best value of it all if you if you can get anything get this one the expansion pack number one it has everything in it um, so quite 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 a lot but an awesome game this game here is not designed as a solitary game and i would not recommend this if you want the best solitaire experience, that is, the best AI to fight against. But the game experience in here is awesome, and it's perfectly fine to play it solitaire. There's no hidden information at all. It's rather complex. There's a lot of chits and stacks. The units here are squads, half squads, and even single men leaders. Some say the graphics are outdated, particularly on the maps can find it I'll show you yeah I like it I I uh, to me it's just because the lore of the ASL system has been so strong for so long I really really like these graphics functional buildings forests open terrain some kind of cornfield orchards roads it's very easy to make out so um yeah some don't like the graphics i like it a lot and you can get i think the starter kit number one is in print so it's possible to buy it from multiman it works like this from multiman that they are not very well they don't put out the games with a high tempo or frequency so when they're out of stock they tend to get out of stock for some time, so if you see something in stock that you want, just grab it. As you've seen, this is a big system, but the level of detail here is astonishing. I mean, squads, and they can carry, now this was a bad example, hard to find, but they, squads can be equipped with, what's this, you know, machine guns, heavy machine guns, light machine guns, mortars, and you have Artillery, and here's again my criticism of the, the artwork. And there are tanks and vehicles in there as well, so you can see a vehicle, so there are bigger chits, but you know, it's not the most fancy graphics, particularly when you compare it to modern games, I guess. Uh, and the leaders, they influence the decisions and the outcomes uh, of the squads. Or the outcome of the, of the squad's choices basically so it's a big big system as you can see but even if you just buy this here there's a lot of game in here there's a lot of scenarios and and the bonus they have historical modules which i simply yeah i'm over the moon with this is decision at elst and this is a fold out map the graphics are the same but the you know, map is, is is much much bigger than the normal footprint of this game can't get it all in, sorry. But yeah, the same type of graphics, paper map instead of these cardboard maps. Takes much more table space, of course. So what I find really good, it's probably the best simulation I know of, of real-time combat. And it's because there are so many fire actions. You get fired upon, you can return the fire, and there is residual fire hanging about. So that simulates really very well the simultaneous actions, that things go on at the same time, even if it's a you go I go system. And that, that really has consequences later on, uh, because there will be parts that are lined now with machine gun fire, so you can't move through there now, because there's combat going on there, really. The only decision needed when you're out of phase is really should you fire opportunity for it or not. And that can be a little sort of spoiling, but yeah, it's, it's not a biggie. Um, it's very small, it's very, very small footprint. You play typically on, on one or two of these maps. 
so that is easily fitable on a, on a table except of course for the historical model or the hustle can be cluttery if it's as, if I'm you know forced to say something negative and the rule book is well maybe some people would find it scary because there's a lot of paragraphs and stuff um, as you can see here but it's very clear actually once you start to read it and get into it cluttery as I said it can be cluttery because of all the counters and markers for everything if you have done an action or if you have fired first time or second time it takes a bit of time to play I for me it's a brain burner actually and there's quite a few rules so that's on the negative side on this um, as I said I have two playthroughs and they are linked here somewhere um, and I also as I mentioned before I showed you my number two is that it's really hard to decide between number two and and number one so right now today let's meet my number one so what I meant to say was really let's meet the game that right now today is my number one oh, and heavy conflict of heroes awakening the bear from Academy Games fantastic game I have had recently I done did a playthrough and this game is not, if you only get the game box here, it's not designed as a solitaire play. You should get the solo missions for Conflict of Heroes. As you've seen me play here on this channel. I hope you've seen it anyway. Here each unit is a squad. And the counters here are beautiful as everything else in this game. It's no problem. To see what they are and you don't have those done envelopes for infantry but you actually have infantry and it's a very modern uh, modern design if I'm to say one thing negative about the counters and it drives me almost nuts Uwe if you can hear me please change this I know you won't because it's going to be impossible but this is really the rear defense and the front defense here is on the bottom and that's that drives me nuts because it makes me, I have to think all the time. It's intuitive for me that this is front defense and the rear defense is on the bottom. For some reason it's not, but that's the only thing with the counters because all the information is on the counters here. So every round you will draw one of these action cards and that will help you doing some actions or adding your firepower and this kind of stuff. So it will help you in the war, sort of. But it's a limited resource, it does, it, it does not drive the game in any way. So of course when I say that this is my number one, it is a prerequisite that you have the solo rules. That is the only way you're going to be able to play this meaningful solitaire. Should I say that? Is that true? Maybe not, but that's the only way I've played it anyway. I've tried to play it and it is fantastic. I'd like to show you one thing more before we talk about the game system. And that's the maps. They are just incredible. That level of detail there. Wow, it's cool. You get five of these in the game. So we said that Maribi was based on the solid module because the solid module changes the game in, in many ways. Um, it has this very unique system here with, uh, with an AI which gives a priority and it tries to interpret the current situation on the map and it does that pretty darn good, pretty good. You also use this to check if your unit is spent or finished with the action. The way it works is that your unit takes one action and you check if it's spent or not. And it may be spent or it may not be spent. So you don't really know for sure how many actions each unit can take. The higher the cost of the action, the more likely the unit is to be spent and finished with this turn. But it no, it's not 100% guaranteed. So that's really neat. I like that aspect of the game. 
it has quite a low complexity. There's few number of cheats. You don't need a combo resolution uh, chart. Everything is printed on, on here. You can see the attack value, the defense value, you just add the terrain. You roll a die and that's it. You will find out if you're hit or not. And it is, this deck of card here is the best AI in the industry. I have never ever played, or nor do I know of, a better or more realistic AI in board games. And many computer AIs are worse than this one. It is not scripted in any way, and it can actually play either sides. If you, you can switch mid-combat if you like, or you can play it again, but switching sides, and the AI will work just as well. So there's no scripting here at all. The best solitaire war game I've ever tried. War game that's designed for solitaire. It's the best. If there's any negatives here, and, and there sure there are, no games is perfect, it is that it's a limited number of solo scenarios. You have a firefight generator. It's really, um, it's really a, a add-on you can buy. Um, but I'm not sure how well that works for solo play. There's some missions there and some goals which you can draw, which is tough for a solitaire uh, bot to to uh, to understand, like hiding units, for instance. How will the cards reflect that? I'm not sure. That that would be the, the negative, I think, that it may be a limited uh, experience because of the limited number of scenarios. Other than that, uh, it is a game which is quick and easy to set up and quick and easy to play. Gets right, get, gets you right into the action. Hopefully, there will be more solo bots for the older modules in this game system. I will not hesitate to buy it, buy any of them, if the if they are in a thematic theater that that um, interests me. If we can get the cards back here, it will be very helpful. Thank you very much. So a huge game. If you got everything as I do for for Awakening Bear, um, Conflict of Heroes from Academy Games, which is now at the top of my best solitary gaming experience in war games. Okay, that's it for now, folks. Hope you enjoy this little top five list and um, it's really meant like an intermesso until I can get my head around a few rules for, for some games and, and play them out for you on this channel and for myself as well. Until then, take care and uh, hope to see you back in another video. Bye bye. <laughs>